republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. <coughs> Councilmember Irby? Here. Councilmember Page? Here. Councilmember Watt? Here. Here. Councilmember Gray? Present. Councilmember Dolan? Councilmember Trachis? Present. Councilmember Carter? Present. Mr. Chair, we have a quorum. Uh, thank you. We uh, don't have a journal yet prepared, but I would um, would like to recognize the court administration for allowing us to use their courtroom today. Um, since our council chambers was being occupied for a tax sale. Um, we have no bid openings, so we'll move to communications. Mr. Chair, we have no tax compromises this morning, so we'll move to zoning matters. Under zoning matters, item number one, fourth district. Receive by the county councilor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Item number two, sixth district. Receive and file, please. So ordered. Item number three, Council Member Dolan asked me to hold this. Uh, he was unable to make our meeting today, so this item will be held, and that will be the order. Moving on to road and bridge matters, Mr. Chair. Item number one, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and seventh district. Receive file plan specifications and detailed estimate of costs be approved, and the director of procurement be authorized to advertise for bids pending Federal Highway Administration authorization as requested, and a copy of this report be sent to the interested parties. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to other communications, Mr. Chair. Item number one, fourth district. Receive file and the county councilor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Item number two, third district. Receive and file, please. So ordered. Item number three, sixth district. Receive and file, same motion for number four, please. So ordered. Item number five. Receive and file, and that will be the order. Item number six, fourth district. Receive and file. So ordered. Item number seven, sixth district. Receive and file, please. So ordered. Item number eight, second district. Receive and file, and that will be the order. Item number nine, all districts. Uh, receive and file, same motion through item number 10. Um, this uh, retirement plan report uh, still does not reflect the impact of the employee raises on the retirement plan, retirement plan, and um, we'll continue that conversation. <clears throat> Item number 11, First District. Receive file and the county council be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Item number 12, First District. Same motion. So ordered. Item number 13. I uh, receive file and the county council be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. Same motion through item number 14, and that will be the order. Item number 15, 6th district. Number 15? 15, 6th district. Okay. Receive and file and the county council will be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Item number 16. Uh, same motion through item number 18, and that will be the order. Item number 19, 3rd District. Receive file contract in an amount not to exceed $503,372.40 be approved and awarded to LF Krupp Construction Inc., the lowest responsive bidder, as recommended. An authorization for revision to the existing traffic control devices be approved as requested. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion to Please read the add ons. Item number 1, 6th District. Give me a minute, please. Okay. Okay. Receive file and the deposit agreement and subdivision plan be approved as recommended, please. Thank you. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, report of the county executive. No report. Um, report of special committees. Mr. Chair, please hold on the order of business. So ordered. Uh, public forum. Speakers this morning, Mr. Chair. Um, please uh, come to the podium when your uh, name is called <coughs> and uh, state your name and address for the record. Uh, adjust the microphone so we can catch your comments and please try and keep your comments to three minutes. 
First speaker. First speaker today is Cindy Winkler. Good morning, Cindy Winkler. I live in Old Jamestown area, 63034. And I'm not going to do a second first thing that's the first from last Tuesday night. Hopefully you guys got to look at chapter 10 of the books that I purchased and brought here for you. Just want to reiterate that there's no appetite for an NU to see a zoning change in the Old Jamestown area of 63034. The Planning Commission agrees this is not in keeping with the Old Jamestown area study or in character with the area. I'm sure that's pretty clear to everyone now. We don't want or need any more storage facilities in the area. Please be reminded that the petitioners, the Baileys, BSC Holdings LLC, and Fireside Financial, have been a little disingenuous in their representation to residents and to you all regarding their intentions for the property, both in scope of development and in their level of sophistication. So if if this comes up for vote today or when it does come up for vote, I hope you'll support us and just say no. Thanks. Have a good day. Thank you. Next speaker is Don Otto. Good morning. My name is Donald C. Otto, Jr. I am the Executive Director and General Counsel of Missouri Funeral Directors and Bombers Association. And although my current address is 1757 Woodcliffe in Jefferson City, Missouri, I was born and raised in St. Louis County. Uh, the answer to the question is Parkway West. Um, my father still lives here. My mother is buried here. All my relatives are here. And I represent the funeral homes in the area as well. My great-grandfather is buried at Jefferson Barracks. And that's why we're here today, is to support Bill 201, which I think is on page 17 of your agenda, which will uh, allow Jefferson Barracks to expand, continue its operations beyond, I believe, the 2021. If you've seen the uh, PBS documentary, The Undertaking, uh, you would have seen a, a Thomas Lynch say that the purpose of a funeral is to get the dead where they need to be. And for uh, many years, for many, many veterans, and we have a number of them here today, um, and their families, the place where their honored dead need to be has been Jefferson Barracks. At a briefing in Washington, D.C. last year, I was told of, by the, uh, the officials uh, in charge of the, the entire operation nationwide that of all the veterans cemeteries in the entire country, of every single one of them, Jefferson Barracks is number one on the list of those buried there that live within 100 miles of the cemetery. Jefferson Barracks is the most used cemetery for veterans of people who live nearby. It is definitely St. Louis and the St. Louis area's place where they want to take their honored dead. And that is why we support 201. It's my understanding that without this uh, sale of the property, the Veterans Administration spaces will begin to run out in 2021. Uh, I have participated in a number of funerals out, ceremonies out at Jefferson Barracks. If you've never done so, I urge you to do so. If you've ever been there, if you've ever seen what that means to people, and what that means to our community, and what it means to our honored veterans, mm -hmm. you want to make sure that it doesn't end. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is Gary Bass. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the council. I'm here to speak on behalf of Bill 201 <coughs> to sell a portion of Jefferson or Silver Springs Park uh, to the United States Government Department of Veterans Affairs to give a place to our veterans. Uh, to find their final resting spot. The sale of park land is often controversial, but in this case, I think it, uh, it's warranted. This is not a new issue to the council or to the public. It's been debated for several years. Uh, there's been public meetings. There's been online surveys. Uh, we've tracked uh, on, uh, letters, emails. Uh, over 2,500 people 
uh, have responded and weighed in on this issue. And almost 60% of those individuals favor the sale. As the gentleman before me said, uh, we will run out of space at the cemetery by 2021. The additional 33.64 acres will allow for burials at the cemetery through 2038. I think this is an appropriate use of our land. As many of you recall, Jefferson Barracks was actually sold to the county for a park in 1950 for $3,500. Uh, what we're doing is returning this land uh, to the government for one of the most worthy uses I can imagine, and that's taking care of our country's back. I urge you all to support this bill. I'd like to also mention that the proceeds from the bill, if approved, will be used to improve the other portion of Sylvan Springs Park and parks throughout St. Louis County. Uh, once again, I urge you to support this bill. Thank you. Thanks, Gary. Next speaker is Kira Braxton. <clears throat> I just want to say um, that we uh, appreciate um, <coughs> you all coming to uh, some sort of uh, what's the word I want to use um, compromise or working together with the county executive or him wanting to work with you all to come to some sort of um, reasonable conclusion for the 55 Justice Services Employees and Corrections Medicine. And we're just looking forward to seeing you to hear um, what the conclusion of that meeting was and what we um, have to do. Thank you. Kira, can I? Yes, go ahead. I'd just like to say thank you for coming forward and speaking up week after week, all of you, and, uh, and uh, advocating for all of the of the uh, Justice Service employees. Uh, we have met and reached a, a tentative agreement. Hopefully next week, well, I'm sure next week, we'll have uh, something to to give to you, some details, and uh, we'll, I think you'll be happy. Oh, thank, you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is Jim Crispin. <clears throat> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, St. Louis County Council. Morning. My name is Jim Christman. Uh, I live at 1384 West Brook Meadows Lane in, in St. Louis County, Missouri. I'm here uh, representing uh, my zone of the American Legion Zone 4 uh, in behalf of Bill 201. we like to see this bill passed to allow the expansion of the cemetery at Jefferson Barracks, one of the best in the United States. Uh, so that further generations of veterans can be laid to rest with honor in Jefferson Barrett, Missouri. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is Daryl Neal. <coughs> Good morning, everyone. Compliment. Um, my name is Daryl Neal, and I reside at 101 Little Piney Drive in State St. Louis, Missouri. <coughs> I grew up in St. Louis County um, pretty much all my life. I'm here this morning to uh, ask the councilman, the board, and everyone to consider um, August the 10th. My brother was fatally killed in a car crash in a high-speed chase with St. Louis County <coughs> Police Force. For a, um, a traffic uh, violation. So, two young men lost their lives because of this situation. So, uh, my family and the community are asking you guys to form a review board with subpoena power so we can get this situation stopped. If there is no felony involved, there should not be a police chase to where you in a community where people walk in the street riding bikes, you know, a whole lot of things could have went bad that they decided what actually did go bad. Thank you. Thank you. 
Next speaker is Clara. And I can't read the last name. We'll have to ask the speaker. I've decided not to. I'm the mother of Kayla Miller. My, de- my son just spoke. I don't think I was able Thank you. Next speaker is Al Katzenberger. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Uh, I'm the lay man for Gibson Barracks uh, Cemetery, uh, the chapel that is out there, and for the expansion for what they call the 10th District. And the 10th District is all the folks in St. Louis County. Uh, I'm a veteran, 40 years and 9 days. I was in county, but at the long service. I come from a military family. My dad served out at Gibson Barracks. Uh, and they actually got a citizenship out there uh, by serving in the military. They accelerated his time so that he could get a citizenship. Um, it's a holy place for me. Uh, I spent my childhood out there. I think my dad told me when I was a young one that he even saw Judy Garland perform out there. I don't remember it, but that's what he told me. Uh, so I've been out there for a long, long time. It's Silver Spring is not very well utilized. And as you know, there's another large park, over 40, over 400 acres nearby. Uh, it's unfortunate that we need this land, but it's, it's very well it's, it's needed by a lot of people. I currently have a, a brother-in-law who is in hospice, a veteran of the Navy, like myself. His dad is buried out there with his mother. I have many relatives out there. And I'm very concerned about you know, the future of uh, what's happening to different things. It's a beautiful place, and I travel around the country. I go around and see these other cemeteries, and it's a very well taken care of cemetery. The staff out there is just the first word. The other thing, too, that I'd like to bring to your attention, there's another cemetery nearby, and some of you need to pay attention to it. 18,000 souls are buried there, and they're being neglected. It's owned by a quarry company nearby, and it's, it's, it's called the old Robert Cook Hospital Cemetery. It's being neglected. It has weeds as tall as this room, and you should be checking into it. It's a disrespect for the county and for us. That should be made into a park. Okay, there's a passive park. You want to see one? It's called Old St. Marcus Park from Redways and King's Highway. So you could get some, some park land back. And maybe use some of the sales money to improve that area because it's a travesty that those souls are over there. Even the way they were buried is a travesty uh, because they were stacked on top of each other in those in those pits over there. Terrible situation. I know about this because I used to visit that area because I had workers down there. And it's a terrible thing to see what they were doing to those souls. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Al. <clears throat> Next speaker is Artie Dinoff. Thank you, members of the County Council. My name is Arnie A.C. Dinoff. Uh, my address is P.O. Box 1535, Fallon. And I'm a public advocate, a uh, civic and public advocate. I'm the University of Charles County Department <laughs> of Public Director. And I'm here to complain about the court system and Judge Michael B. Burton. Um, I'm here for discriminatory practices, inhumane treatment, civil rights violations, being held as a political prisoner, hate inside of this building and your uh, prison, violation of the Constitution, both the state and the United States government, the Eighth Amendment, cruel and unusual punishment, I've never ever seen anyone be treated as harshly and badly as I have been treated. And it's all over an $893 transcript fee. My complaint last week of, was of Judge Michael P. Burton and county employees in the Department of Justice Services. After being treated like a fifth class citizen, very inhumane to treatment, and held as a political prisoner, while having a heart attack all over a, a civil issue of $893 transcript fee in which I could not afford to pay. I was shackled, handcuffed, and bound to an ambulance gurney taken to Missouri Baptist Hospital 
And then bound uh, and um, shackled to a hospital bed in the emergency room where justice service employees had an argument with cardiologists and emergency room doctors. They didn't have the best interest of my care in mind. Last week, I requested an investigation of the county council or a county council committee in the county executive's office. I have not heard anything from any elected official in one week. My telephone number is 314-440-9000. My email address is A-R-N-I-D, D as in David, I-E-N-O-F-F -F at Yahoo.com. I have not been contacted by the county executive. No staff members. No contact from presiding judge uh, Doug Beach. No contact from the judicial court administrator. No contact from the acting director of justice <coughs> services, Ms. Julia Choudhury. I'm sorry if I may have mispronounced that name. No contact from the sheriff for an internal affairs complaint in the treatment of a sheriff's deputy while I was on the ground having breathing problems and having a heart attack. He called me bad names. Undespicable names that you don't even want to hear that I was called. Didn't fight anybody, didn't cause any problems, did what they told me to do. No contact from the Department of Public Health in the non-treatment from the nursing staff inside the prison. No contact from county police for state law violations, harsh treatment, discrimination, civil rights violations. All over $893. Arnie, can you wrap up your comments? Uh, there were injuries uh, to my ankles, lack of proper medical treatment, treated like a slab of meat, and thrown into a cell. Uh, a cell. Assaulted, being pushed in shoves, black, spit on, and I could go, I've got pages of notes. So I will, uh, in my comments, but I am looking for an investigation. I will come each and every week to the county council. I will go through my story so you know exactly what I'm saying, and I'm going to testify. There needs to be changes in the court system. You know what? I'm a good, decent human being. I work for my community. I try to do the best thing in a better world. And to be treated like this by a judge, by your justice services employee, it's despicable, unhumane, unethical, and violation of your standard operating procedures. And I'm asking and begging you as a counsel to do an investigation in my clients. Thank you. Thanks, Ernie. Next speaker is Marquita Fletcher. But I wanted to thank you guys, and I appreciate you, Ms. Kirby, for all your hard work that you have done for the correction and just the service staff. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, to, thanks to all of the council members for participating, so I don't want to take that credit. Well, that, that may be true, but I do want to point out that it was Ms. Irby and her leadership that got this done. So <laughs> kudos to you, Hazel. Thank you. Next speaker is Zachy Baruti. Good morning, Councilman. My name is Zachy Baruti. I reside at 812 Saxony Court. I'm here uh, in, uh, on, behalf, on behalf of the Universal African People's Organization as well as the family of Clara Chiefs. I'm here, first of all, to I was hoping uh, Executive uh, Steve Stinger was here. <coughs> but I'm asking Steve Stinger, along with all the rest of you, to condemn the most recent high-speed chase that ended in the, uh, in the death of two gentlemen, a 49-year-old gentleman as well as a 59-year-old gentleman that was caused by a St. Louis County police officer who lied and said it was no chase according to the St. Louis Post Dispatch as well as Channel 2, which shows clearly why there ought to be, and we are asking you to embrace the concept of a civilian oversight review board, because obviously with the video, many of you may have seen on Channel 2 and other stations, 
clearly showed that there was a initial cover up as it relates to this chase, which they reported as a one car crash. So if there was any clear example where our citizens should be reviewing the actions of the police, then this is a clear example. <coughs> so I challenge you, in terms of the police and community relationship, to join us in this call. Also, I'm very curious as to how many lawsuits have been filed against the St. Louis Police Department, I mean County Police, per the County Council, and the amounts that have been settled either through the full litigation or out of court. So I would like to be able to have access to that and ask that you also find out for yourself. Because if there is a pattern of abuse by St. Louis County Police, then that needs to be put to the end. It is a damn shame that on that evening, in a high traffic area, that you had this kind of chase that could have even been worse than the two fatalities that did occur, which violates your policy in terms of that should not be a chase unless a serious felony has been committed. So I challenge you, I challenge you, I challenge you, I challenge you to stand with the people. That's three minutes, Mr. Chairman. To Thank you. Yes. And the other person was granted an extra minute. So I challenge you, again, to stand with the people and I just call for a civilian oversight review board with subpoena power. On that note, thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is Mike LeBlanc. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Michael LeBlanc. I'm the commander of the 10th District American Legion. I represent 23 posts and 3,500 veterans and another 1,500 family members throughout St. Louis County. First, I would like to applaud you for having this forum available. This ability for the people to come and address our elected officials should always be available. Don't ever take that away. I like it. Sylvan Springs Park transfer started 10 years ago. Started by two World War II veterans. Both are deceased now. It's a long process. We are coming to the end. I would like to plant the seed that the number used was, will run out of space in 2038. So again, let's not take 10 years. Let's not put a lot of things up to chance. Let's again, start to look at proper planning and how to use that. And lastly, I would like uh, Councilman Mark Carter to stand. I'd like to give him an award from the 10th District. It's a spent Casey from an M1 grade for all your support over the years. Thank you so much. Yeah. Appreciate you. Final speaker this morning is Azora Liggins. seeking help on um, my disability matters. I still have not heard back from uh, Chairman Page, nor Councilwoman Irby, nor Executive Stinger. I'm very concerned because um, I'm reaching 65 and I still have not gotten information on my disability. I've been <coughs> coming here. Uh, white collar crime is something within these corporations that must be stopped. I fought for 20 years for myself. 
I've been trying to get into the prosecuting attorney's office for the last several months to prosecute uh, Mark M. Harris, who works for the Boeing Corporation, who is currently stealing my money every month. And Missouri is the Shelby State. I think we can all say that documents speak on the face. I have never came before you with anything less than proof, and nobody has even bothered to read it or reach out to me. I want to echo the man who spoke about the St. Louis County Courts, uh, Judge uh, Ellen Sawaki and Judge Mary Schroeder. These judges are in uh, cahoots with the Boeing Corporation, and I'm sure that if the prosecuting attorney's office would do their job and just process a client, just process it, then it will take the proper course. But I won't, I'm a God-fearing woman, and I will not lean to my own understanding. But I will pray for all of you who sit here and turn your eyes and not see the truth. Because this county is hurt. I've heard it over and over again. Young man talking about the courts. The police are just not in compliance, and nobody's doing anything. It concerns me these issues should ride our agenda. Every Tuesday, we should be looking at how we're getting closer to fixing things in this county. And I became before you guys for the last two years, and I've got these blanket stirrups, but I haven't got anything that says we're moving forward. So I would like to see that happen. I understand that you have this big job of the budget, but humanity should be first. Thank you. Excuse me. Are you saying that we've never contacted you and never helped you? Is that what you're saying? No, what I'm saying is that you have never cared. You sent me a form letter and told me you could not help me. You told me that you did not have the jurisdiction. I beg to differ. My, My problem is in St. Louis County is being created by people and corporations in this county. You control this county the counsel and the executive. Have, so, you, have you been still going to the prosecuting attorney's office talking to them? I'm not going there. They'll arrest me. So that's why I came to you because I asked you to help me get them to do their job. See, I know the games that are played when you come and try to do the right thing. They turn you into the criminal. So, with that, we have to things up. Ms. Liggins, I'd just like to say this, and I'm not going to argue back and forth with you. My assistant worked with you diligently. She called Jefferson City. She did all kinds of things. We could not help you. We have no jurisdiction over what you're dealing with. That's and I just true. don't like you Harvey. saying that we have not Ms. Harvey, worked with you. Ms. your secretary has not called me I don't have a secretary. That is not true. My administrative assistant has worked with you. Yes, no, she has, she has not. Okay. Yes. okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I want more. That was the final speaker, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> this concludes the public forum. Please proceed with the introduction of bills. Bill number 206, introduced by Council Member Page, an ordinance appropriating and setting apart the sum of $400,000 from the unappropriated balance of the Sewer Lateral Repair Program Fund to support a Sewer Lateral Repair. Bill number 207, introduced by Council Member Page, an ordinance amending ordinance number 26,834 by repealing and reenacting section 1, the change to acceptance of grants from the Missouri Department of Economic Development, Division of Workforce Development, for support of programs and services related to the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act. Bill number 208, introduced by Council Members Burby and Walton Gray. An ordinance authorizing the county executive to execute an amendment to a contract with Shot Spider Incorporated, providing for relocating the services area and for compensation therefore. <coughs> Bill number 209 introduced by Council Member Page, an ordinance appropriating and setting apart the sum of $750,000 from the unappropriated balance of the Water Service Fund Fund for the care of the Water Service Fund. <laughs> Bill number 210 introduced by Council Member Dolman, an ordinance. And then Title 12, St. Louis County Revised Rights. I'm um, sorry, Mr. Chairwoman, I'm going to introduce that for Council Member Dolan. I'll do it. <coughs> 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 
Bill number 210 introduced by Council Member Page for Council Member Dolan. An <coughs> ordinance amending Title 12, St. Louis County Revised Ordinance 1974 is amended traffic code by enacting and adding two new provisions to Schedule C. <coughs> Mr. Chair, that is all the board. Thank you. Perfection. <coughs> Number 133 introduced by Council Member Page. Um, I move to drop this bill from the agenda uh, and it will be dropped. Um, we'll ask council members to suggest uh, and recommend appointments to fill this commission. There are several vacancies and I would like to continue discussion about legislation to establish a full time ADA coordinator. Bill number 136, introduced by Council Member Wassinger. Hold on the order of business, please. Bill number 136 is held. Bill number 187, introduced by Council Member Page. Um, Chair, we have a substitute bill. Yes, could you read it? Substitute bill number one for bill number 187, introduced by Council Member Page. In ordinance, amending ordinance number <coughs> 26,160 is amended by repealing and reenacting section two pertaining to a contract with the Missouri Department of Social Services state technical assistance team for the provision of child autopsies and related services by the St. Louis County Medical Examiner. Move adoption of substitute bill number one for bill number 187. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I move for um, perfection of substitute bill number one for bill number 187. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Substitute bill number one for bill number 187 is perfected. Bill number 191 introduced by Council Member Walton Gray. Uh, hold on the order of business uh, to give an opportunity for uh, Rivers Edge to speak with the uh, community. That means. Bill number 191 itself. Bill number 194 introduced by Council Member Harder. I move to perfect bill number 194. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 194 is perfected. Bill number 195 introduced by Council Member Page. Move to perfect Bill number 195. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 195 is perfected. Bill number 196 introduced by Council Member Page. Move to perfect Bill number 196. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 196 is perfected. Bill number 197, introduced by Councilmember Page. Uh, Move to hold Bill number 197, and this will be held uh, next week. I would like to see a substitute for a uh, one-year contract um, for this uh, vendor. Bill number 198, introduced by Councilmember Page. Um, move to hold Bill 193. Oh, I see. It's 193 in my dialogue. Okay. I move to hold bill number 198. Um, and this will be held. And next week, I'd like to see a substitute for a one year contract. Bill number 199, introduced by Council Member Page. Move to perfect bill number 199. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 199 is perfected. Bill number 200 introduced by Council Member Wassinger. I move to perfect bill number 200. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 200 is perfected. Bill number 201 introduced by Council Member Trakis. Move to perfect bill number 201, please. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 201 is perfected. Bill number 202 introduced by Council Member Page. Uh, Move to hold bill number 202, and 202 will be held. I would like to see a substitute that offers um, other discounted fees, such as uh, green fees to retirees, and I'd like to see the fiscal impact of this legislation. Bill number 203, introduced by Council Member Dolan. I move to hold bill number 203. At the request of the sponsor, and bill number 203 will be held. Bill number 204 introduced by Councilmember Page. Move to hold bill number 204 until 204 will be held, and we'd like to have a committee to hold hearing next week on um, 
on the by state uh, appropriation. Bill number 205 introduced by Council Member Page. Move to perfect bill number 205. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 205 is perfected. Final passage. Bill number 353 introduced by Council Member Page. I'm going to hold bill number 353, and 353 will be held. Bill number 180, introduced by Council Member Page. Move for final passage of bill number 180. Second. Roll call. Council Member Irby? Aye. Council Member Page? Aye. Council Member Wassener? Aye. Council Member Gray? Aye. Council Member Dolan? Council Member Trakis? Aye. Council Member Carter? Aye. We chair on bill number 180, there are six ayes and one absent. Bill number 180 is finally passed. Bill number 181, introduced by Council Member Page. Move for final passage of Bill Number 181. Second. Roll call. Council Member Irby. Aye. Council Member Page. Aye. Council Member Wassener. Aye. Council Member Gray. Aye. Council Member Dolan. Council Member Craigus. Aye. Council Member Carter. Aye. Chair Bill Number 181. There are six ayes and one absent. Bill Number 181 is finally passed. Bill Number 182 introduced by Council Member Page. Move for final passage of Bill Number 182. Second. Roll call. Council Member Irby? Aye. Council Member Page? Aye. Council Member Wasserman? Aye. Council Member Gray? Aye. Council Member Dolan? Council Member Trakin? Aye. Council Member Carter? Aye. Mr. Chair, Bill Number 182, there are six ayes and one absent. Bill Number 182 is finally passed. Bill Number 183, introduced by Council Member Page? Move for final passage of Bill Number 183. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Irby? Aye. Councilmember Page? Aye. Councilmember Wassener? Aye. Councilmember Gray? Aye. Councilmember Dolan? Councilmember Trakin? Aye. Councilmember Carter? Aye. Bill number 183, there are six ayes and one absent. Bill number 183 is finally passed. Bill number 184, introduced by Councilmember Page. Move for final passage, bill number 184. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Irby? Aye. Councilmember Page? Aye. Councilmember Wassener? Aye. Councilmember Gray? Aye. Councilmember Dolan? Councilmember Trakin? Council Member Dolan, Council Member Trakis? Aye. Council Member Carter? Aye. Chair Bill Number 184, there are six ayes and one absent. Bill Number 184 is finally passed. Bill Number 185, introduced by Council Member Page. Move for final passage, Bill Number 185. Second. Roll call. Council Member Irby? Aye. Council Member Page? Aye. Council Member Wassener? Aye. Council Member Gray? Aye. Council Member Dolan, Council Member Trakis? Aye. Council Member Carter? Aye. Mr. Chair, Bill Number 185, there are six ayes and one absent. Bill number 185 is finally passed. Bill number 186, introduced by Council Member Page. Move for final passage of Bill number 186. Second. Roll call. Council Member Irby? Aye. Council Member Page? Aye. Council Member Wasserman? Aye. Council Member Gray? Aye. Council Member Dolan? Council Member Trakis? Aye. Council Member Carter? Aye. Chair Bill number 186, there are six ayes and one absent. Bill number 186 is finally passed. Bill number 188, introduced by Council Member Page. Move for final passage of Bill Number 188. Second. Roll call. Council Member Irby? Aye. Council Member Page? Aye. Council Member Wassener? Aye. Council Member Gray? Aye. Council Member Dolan? Council Member Trakis? Aye. Council Member Carter? Aye. Mr. Chair, Bill Number 188, there are six ayes and one absent. Bill Number 188 is finally passed. Bill Number 189, introduced by Council Member Page. Move for final passage of Bill Number 189. Second. Roll call. Council Member Irby? Aye. Council Member Page? Aye. Council Member Wasserman? Aye. Council Member Gray? Aye. Council Member Dolan? Council Member Trakis? Aye. Council Member Carter? Aye. Council Member 189, there are six ayes and one absent. Bill Number 189 is finally passed. Bill Number 192, introduced by Council Member Trakis? Move for final passage of Bill 182, please. Second. Roll call. Council Member Irby? Aye. Council Member Page? Aye. Council Member Gray? Aye. Council Member Dolan? Council Member Trakis? Aye. Council Member Carter? Aye. Chair Bill Number 192, there are six ayes and one absent. Bill Number 192 is finally passed. Bill Number 193, introduced by Council Member Page. Move for final passage of Bill Number 193. Second. Roll call. Council Member Irby? Aye. Council Member Page? Aye. Council Member Wassener? Aye. Council Member Gray? Aye. Council Member Dolan? Council Member Trakis? Aye. Council Member Carter? Aye. Mr. Chair, Bill Number 193, there are six ayes and one absent. Bill Number 193 is finally passed. Resolutions? If you have any resolutions, Mr. Chair, we have two this evening. Resolution Number 1, introduced by Council Member Irby. Please read Resolution Number 2. Mm -hmm. 
Whereas John C. Jack Agnew came into this world on August 28, 1928, and whereas Jack married Joan Lee Wadey and they lovingly raised two sons, Father John Agnew who now resides in New York, and Jack who continues to reside in the St. Louis area, and whereas Jack was very active in North County politics for many years, and whereas Jack was first elected to the office of mayor of the city of Delwood in April 1994 and continued to serve until April 2011, making him the longest serving mayor in the city's history, and whereas Jack was a dedicated public servant committed to serving the residents of Delwood, and whereas Jack left this world on August 20th, 2018, just 13 months after losing his wife, and whereas it is appropriate for the council and all the residents of St. Louis County to cause to honor a life so well lived, now therefore be it resolved by the County Council of St. Louis County, Missouri, as follows. Thanks. Section 1, the County Council extends its heartfelt condolences to family, friends, colleagues, and former constituents of the Honorable Jack Hagen. Thank you. I move for adoption of resolution number one. Second. Roll call. Council Member Irving? Aye. Council Member Page? Aye. Council Member Watson? Aye. Council Member Gray? Aye. Council Member Dolan? Council Member Trakin? Aye. Council Member Harder? Aye. Mr. Chair, resolution number one, there are six ayes and one absent. Resolution number one is adopted. Resolution number two, introduced by Council Member Walton Gray. I move for the adoption of resolution number two. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Irving? Aye. Councilmember Page? Aye. Councilmember Watson? Aye. Councilmember Gray? Aye. Councilmember Harder? Aye. Chair, resolution number two, there are six ayes and one absent. Resolution number two is adopted. Moving on to unfinished business, Mr. Chair, item number one, third district. Hold on the order of business, please. So ordered. Item number two. Um, hold on the order of business and <coughs> the order. Item number three, second district. Uh, County Council will be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation for a one-year contract with no renewals, and then subsequently the department can uh, rebid this contract, and that will be the order. Item number four, seventh district. I'd still like to hold on the order of business. So ordered. And moving on to new business, Mr. Chair, we have two prepared orders this morning. I move for adoption of orders number one and two. Second. All in favor of adoption of orders number one and two? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Orders one and two are adopted. Any comments from any council members? Aye. Yes. I'm sorry, I was remiss and I wanted to ask us to do a moment of silence for uh, our faithful, loyal employee, Craig LaPare, who was. Uh, who was um, who passed away this past week as a result of the uh, tragic uh, shooting at the Metrolink station? I attended the uh, memorial service yesterday, uh, representing the council, so I signed the book for all of us, and, and uh, the family was appreciative and uh, just wanted to acknowledge his, uh, I think, 11 years of service and his commitment to St. Louis County and his love of public transportation. It's very tragic that uh, that very uh, thing that he advocated for so was what caused his death. So um, just wanted to, to make note of that. Yes, we can observe a moment of silence for Craig. Any other comments by council members? We um, are still awaiting our charter amendments. We anticipated them yesterday and certainly um, surprised to not see them. So unless there's an objection, we will recess until uh, 6 p.m. tonight and meet in the council chambers and uh, take up those issues. Any other comments? Okay, we'll stand in recess. Thank you. Please rise for the pledge. Sure. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, 
indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This seems like the right thing to do. <laughs> Oh, we don't do it very often. Um, the August 28th, 2018 meeting of the St. Louis County Council has reconvened. Mr. Chair, the record will reflect that the following members of the council are still present. Um, council Member Irby, Council Member Page, Council Member Wassinger, Council Member Walton Gray, Council Member Trachis, and council member Harder. Um, and um, council member Dolan has now joined the meeting. Great, thank you. Mr. Chair, I move that the council return to the add on agenda order of business for the purpose of taking up an additional agenda item received this evening. Second. Um, all in favor. Uh, Aye. Opposed. Motion carries. So we're here tonight as a continuation, a reconvene of our morning meeting uh, because the uh, bills that were due um, were handled differently this time than they have been in the past. But uh, regardless, um, we have received uh, uh, communications from the county executive um, and we'll... Um, We'll address those. Do you start with the add-on agenda, Jen? We already, the council already took up item number one on the add-on agenda. Mr. Chair, so we'll go to item number two, sixth district. Chair, receive and file and uh, shall substitute bill number one for bill number 173. Pass the, uh, the objections of the county executive thereto notwithstanding. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Member Irby? Aye. Councilmember Page? Aye. Councilmember Wassinger? This is the transfer bill, and I know that the budget director and obviously the county executive think that this is an extreme change to how county government operates. Um, mm -hmm. I think it, the provision, as it is currently written, gives the county executive great authority to move money around without sufficient oversight by the elected officials. I know it's been like that for many, many years. Um, this is simply a proposal to improve and give more transparency to how those monies are changed. And there is a provision in here that will allow ordinance an ordinance to be crafted so that the county government is allowed to operate um, sufficiently and without uh, unneeded oversight or restriction, which I know a couple in the audience are worried about that. Um, so I am going to vote in favor of placing this measure on the ballot. I do think the voters should have a chance to be heard on this issue, and I hope they take the time to study and understand what we're trying to do. It's real, the goal is to improve transparency and make sure that there's sufficient oversight on how our monies are spent. So I vote aye. Councilmember Walton Gray? Aye. Councilmember Dolan? No. Councilmember Trakis? I echo the sentiments of Councilwoman Wassinger and I vote aye. Councilmember Harder? I too would like to make a comment uh, dealing with this that it, it is necessary, it will provide transparency, and we will have a uh, better handle on where the money is spent, the millions in St. Louis County. And uh, I think this is not an undue burden on the county executive uh, to pass this at this time. So I vote aye. Mr. Chair, on the question of shall substitute of whether substitute bill number one for bill number 173 shall pass the objections of the county executive thereto notwithstanding, there are six ayes and one no. Uh, substitute bill number one for bill number 173 is finally passed. I would like to recognize that <clears throat> this bill this charter amendment um, will require, as Councilwoman Watson mentioned, will require ordinances to implement it um, as seamlessly as I would like to see it implemented. And it will require the executive branch and the legislative branch to work together on budget questions. Um, so I think it's actually a positive development and I look forward to um, getting those ordinances in place. Uh, any other comments by any council members? Yes. 
Councilman Wasser. Mine is on something else. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I just want to mention tonight is the first Boundary Commission meeting <laughs> out in West County uh, for the cities of Chesterfield, Wildwood, Manchester, and Baldwin. And they are still three, per, three people short of what they should have. And those three people should have been appointed as representatives of the Municipal League or, or other municipals. And um, I hope the county executive will quickly fill that uh, that need and that void on this board because they're going to need to vote soon on some of these boundary changes. So, as do you know of suggestions? You, you mentioned last week some suggestions have been sent to the county executive. Yes, from my understanding, is Pat Kelly, the uh, head of the municipal league, has sent uh, their three candidates to the county executive to be to be picked and as of this point they still have not been picked or even brought by us or talked about so uh, we need to move that ahead as, as quick as possible okay. Councilman Wessinger. I'll just comment briefly on that too if I may um, I know you brought this up last week and the boards and commissions uh, ordinance that is is on our books currently I think eight of the eleven are filled there are three vacant, and those three vacancies are to be appointed by a committee, one of which is the county executive, the Department of Planning, and the Municipal League. And so you're saying Pat Kelly has delivered his three. Yes. So if, if um, hopefully we can find out from the county executive if he's going to, as you suggested, advance them and move it along quickly because they will be voting. Um, but if not, I guess we could entertain changing the ordinance as well because that is an ordinance created commission. I think they just need to know. I mean, if they don't like the three names, then they need to know that so they can maybe submit three more names or whatever it may be. But they're in the in the dark right now. Okay. Um, well, it certainly is difficult to operate if you've got an 11 member board and you have eight people uh, on it, I understand. Uh, Any other? Yes, um, Councilman I Washington. do want to point out that um, the county executive did not veto the um, government account fin financial accountability bill relating to campaign finance um, or the budget uh, putting the budget online and the park charter amendments so those all were um, signed by him and uh, i'm glad for that we will still i think have to take legal action to get all four propositions on the ballot but it was appreciated that those were sent down signed right yes it would have been good to receive those received in time to place them on the ballot through the normal process but um, regardless we'll uh, petition the we'll petition the circuit court tomorrow to place it on the ballot and the state statute is uh, interpreted very broadly and liberally to um, allow access to the ballot through the court uh, within a few days of that deadline Motion. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in Second. favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion to adjourn. Thank you. Yes. Yes.